Hey guys, I'm Upwards and today I'll be creating a full EDM track on the new MacBook with the M1 Pro chip. I wanted to make this video to share with you guys the experience I've been having with this new laptop in a more practical way. Benchmarks are good, but they don't actually show what this laptop is capable of. So in this video, I'll be showing you the process of me making a full song and how this laptop handles it. From the initial idea to final mixing and everything in between. I have three main goals. Minimizing bouncing to audio, keep the buffer size the same throughout the production, and do not get a system overload warning. I'm going to quickly run off the specs so you know what I'm running on. I have the base model MacBook Pro with the 8 core M1 Pro chip, 16GB of RAM, and 512GB of storage. I've set my buffer size to 128 samples, and I've left the CPU threads to automatic. I'm also going to unplug the charger just to see how much battery life we get from creating a full EDM production. I've also got my headphones and my mini keyboard plugged in as well and I've quitted everything except for Logic Pro and quick time for screen recording. Throughout the video, I will also be monitoring the heat and fan noise. So let's go! Heading straight into it, for this project, I've loaded up Spitfire Labs and the Soft Piano preset. Recording MIDI is no issue and I've added some reverb from ROM by Native Instruments. Even though it does work, Native Instruments is not 100% compatible with macOS Monterey and there are quite a few bugs. In my review of this MacBook from a musician's perspective, I've gone into more depth about these issues. Opening up and loading samples is also super quick and snappy, allowing for a very efficient workflow thanks to the new SSDs in these new MacBooks. After doing the intro, sometimes I feel like making the drop first, so in this case, we're going to do the heavy stuff. So far, so good. I'm loading up several Alchemy presets, serum patches, and plugins such as OTT and ROM. I'm really impressed with the performance. The meter is showing about 70% CPU utilization, and I don't have to bounce anything to audio. At this stage on my old laptop, everything would be bounced to audio by now, and I would have gotten at least three system overload warnings. Chucking in more samples and chopping up audio with a flex pitch, everything is still smooth sailing. Typically in my productions, I mix while I produce, so I've started to bust elements and instruments and sort out the side chaining. I've added a bit more reverb and compression to some elements and worked on some effects. Now that I've gotten the drop finish, I've got to say that this is going way better than expected. Checking out the thermals, the laptop is a bit warm and toasty, but the fan hasn't turned on and we're still going full throttle. We have our first crash. Well that's pretty annoying and I was only using flex pitch, so force quit and retry. Finishing up the intro is smooth sailing for now. Automating and adding more instruments are hardly taxing the CPU and looks like we shouldn't hit any roadblocks until now. And it's stuck again. So it looks like whenever I duplicate the flex pitch track, it crashes logic. Well that's inconvenient, time to try something else. Now we're in the build off section, so more instruments and samples, but nothing crazy and our performance meter is around 50%. So to keep it simple, I'm just going to copy the intro, build up and drop over, and add some variation. Mastering is pretty simple as well. I'm using isotope ozone elements and CPU utilization is still pretty consistent. Taking a quick look at our activity monitor, we're using about 3.1GB of RAM. Because most of the plugins I've installed are not updated for Apple Silicon, it looks like the translation layer Rosetta takes up a lot of RAM about 1.5GB alone. Running the whole project from start to finish is no problem.
performance meters to consistently stay around 50 to 75 percent. Battery life is at 54 percent and we have one hour and 46 minutes left after an hour and 51 minutes of use. So we'll roughly get three and a half hours in total if we keep going, which is pretty alright for heavy usage. If I'm doing a mix of intensive and productivity work, I usually get six to eight hours. So this is quite interesting. So in conclusion, I'm really impressed and happy with the performance of the M1 Pro chip. Producing a full EDM track is no problem and I achieve my three set goals. Minimize balancing the audio, keep the same buffer size throughout the session, and no system overload warnings. No matter what I treat this machine, it just works through it like it's a piece of cake. Not to mention, I am screen recording the whole session at the same time. Multiple serum patches, alchemy patches, reverb, compression, vocal editing, mixing and mastering, this thing took it all single-handedly. However, those two crashes were very annoying and hopefully this is a software bug that will be fixed with the next update to macOS Monterey or Logic Pro. Battery life was pretty alright. At the end of the almost 2 hour session, I was sitting at 54% and we had about an hour and 40 minutes left. So that's pretty good but I think I'll be plugged in for these kind of sessions. Even though this isn't the craziest project, it is akin to most real world productions and I hope this video will help you see what this thing is capable of in a real music production scenario. If you enjoyed the song I made, which is a remix of Time from the movie Inception, I'll leave a link to that below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.